you know, it's times like this, I really wish I used video clips because that clip of Helen Lovejoy just hysterically opining, won't someone please think of the children would just be perfect. Hello there, everybody. So we have arrived at this month's planned uh, video on the topic of LGBTQ plus representation, which means we're going to swap the look out really quick. And um, your reminder, in case you're new around these parts, um, I have a fluid sense of gender, which I do like to express a little bit more cleanly in these videos. And this one's going to be a little bit different because instead of talking about an element of representation or representation in a specific franchise, I'm instead, I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to focus on the ways in which representation is perceived and accepted or not accepted, as is often the case. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is partly as a little bit of a follow up to a video from a few months back that I did on Harry Potter. That video talked about the lack of LGBTQ plus representation in that franchise, as well as touching on a few others. And I don't really want to rehash the points that I made in that video. You can feel free to check it out. There'll be a little link up in the corner, um, assuming I remember to do it. But I noticed that there were a few things that came up continuously in the comments. Now, some of them I addressed already in another video, but one of the ones that I saw a lot was some variant of these books, these stories are for kids, and that kind of material is just not appropriate. Yes, it's the good old think of the children argument. Now, I, I actually want to be careful about the way that I talk about this because, look, let's be blunt about it. Sometimes this argument is a very deliberate smokescreen. It is a more acceptable argument than the one that some people want to be making, and they know that because there are people out there still who very firmly believe that being anything other than both heterosexual and cisgender is an inherently wrong, wicked, or obscene thing. And I'm not going to talk about people who believe that. I'll say what I've said in previous videos. I, I have nothing to say to them. It's not because I'm on some high horse where I feel like I'm above them, but there really isn't much for us to say to each other that isn't just a waste of everybody's time. We're never going to agree on the basic premise for a debate. So instead, talking about this, this whole thing, uh, the whole idea of that shouldn't be in a children's book when it comes to LGBTQ plus representation, I'm aiming this discussion more at people who seem to be a bit torn about it. You know, Folks maybe who aren't arguing for withholding rights from LGBTQ plus people or anything like that, but they still find themselves squeamish about the idea of that kind of representation in media specifically aimed at kids. Though, I mean, naturally, anybody who firmly knows their stance on either side of this debate, you can feel free to stick around. Just know where sort of my focus and my intent is. So I'm also largely going to focus specifically on homosexuality. Uh, as opposed to the full LGBTQ plus spectrum, because I do actually think that acquainting children with concepts of people being transgender, non-binary, gender fluid, and so forth is, it kind of has its own set of hurdles, and those are similar, but don't quite line up with what I'm going to be focusing on in this video. So the first question for me becomes, why is it fairly common to feel uncomfortable about children seeing or being talked to about homosexuality at all. Because, I mean, frankly, that discomfort, it's not logical. And, you know, I'm not even going to address comparing to the level of violence that accept, that is acceptable in things that are for kids. I'm limiting this discussion to depictions of sexuality. Not sex, but sexuality. Because every time a male character is shown to have so much as a crush on a female character or vice versa, that is a depiction of sexuality, heterosexuality to be specific. So again, unless you believe that homosexuality is inherently wrong, then depicting it should be no more offensive than heterosexuality being presented in kids' films. And that's all over the darn things. And I, for one, don't recall anybody calling for Boy Scouts or crying, what about the children over this? or this, 
or this. Folks are fine with this, this, and this. No concerns about this, this, or this. Apparently this, this, or this, totally fine, as is this, this, and this. Everything's peachy here, here, and of course here, even though she's asleep, unable to give consent to this man who she's literally never met. So all that's fine in general, and if we're talking Harry Potter specifically, all of this is totally cool for kids. But making this a canon couple would be a step too far. Now that's me making the logical argument, but I also want to get past the logic because what I'm talking about ultimately are emotional responses. And emotional responses by their nature are not inherently logical. <laughs> so as fun and cathartic as that little exercise was, it doesn't do much to look at the problem because pointing out that a feeling is inconsistent or not backed up by data or is hypocritical doesn't actually make that feeling go away. So why do so many of us get squeamish about kids seeing same-sex couples? I think one of the biggest things is just the fact that societally we're still shaking off generations worth of ingrained anti-gay sentiment. And as much as we might like to go, yes, I do believe that homosexuals are people. I'm so woke. That doesn't instantly erase all the learned behavior we've had up to that point, which is telling you otherwise. I mean, you can be woke as hell and still find yourself uncomfortable at two guys holding hands. That doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that this stuff runs deeper than just your conscious understanding that it's there. And that's true of all of us. I mean, that's true of me. I've been working through my own BS presumptions about people just like anybody else. Hopefully, this problem will get better with time as we make an effort to not teach these presumptions to our own kids, but that's, that's gradual stuff. So for people who are currently raising kids or have done so in the past, in other words, people my age, and older, there's still a lot that we've got sort of just cluttering up our head spaces about all of this. So what are some of those presumptions that are still holding on for today's parents? Well, there's the underlying message that anything that isn't heterosexual and cisgender is simply abnormal. And abnormal can be a weird thing because strictly speaking, it just means not typical, not usual, and not the most common option. But it's a word and a concept that carries with it a great deal of negative connotations. There is a lot of baggage in the idea of abnormal. And it's unlikely that anybody would use that word to describe a US citizen who's watching broadcast soccer. I mean, that is abnormal, statistically speaking, they're in the minority, but people wouldn't use that term because the term carries negative connotations. Yet, we will use that term and things like it for deviations from heterosexual cisgender. And I think part of that is a fear of going against nature because if you contextualize sex for its biological purpose, then homosexuality makes no sense because suddenly it's not fulfilling the purpose that sex should have from a strictly biological perspective. And that adds another layer to the perceived wrongness of it. Even though the reality is that sex in human society is and always has been about much more than the simple need to propagate the species. But then there's the other long feared aspects of homosexuality like the fear of recruiting. Now, this was a big one for a long time, and it still persists overtly in some areas. The idea that homosexuals are actively seeking to turn heterosexuals into one of their own. And that fear is most frequently bought, brought up in regards to children. That is why so much anti-gay propaganda paints homosexuals, gay men especially, as pedophiles. 
They're coming for your kids to turn them into the, their own and grow their numbers. And even if you don't consciously believe that, I think it's a drum that was banged for so loud and so long, there's a fair number of people who in the back of their minds can't help but think, okay, it's not that I think gays are recruiting kids, but I mean, maybe just to be safe, we don't expose the kids to it. Because to be frank about it, being a parent, it makes you paranoid. And I know because I'll remind you, I've got a kid of my own. As a parent, you overexamine everything for how it could possibly damage, hurt, or otherwise screw up your kid. And much like if you go on the internet and look up any medical symptom, eventually you'll come to the conclusion that you must have cancer because that's the most extreme possibility. If you start thinking about what your kid takes in from their shows, movies, video games, whatever, you can imagine the worst possible scenario and suddenly something innocent feels a bit less so. In addition, I think many folks my age and older, we think back to our own experiences of learning what homosexuality was. Now, I can't speak for everybody, but I can talk for myself. That basically came up in sex ed class or, you know, whatever your equivalent of that was, which meant that the focus when I first learned about it was on the physical mechanics and way less on the emotional bond. Again, not speaking for anybody else, but I do suspect that most folks my age weren't presented with the idea of homosexuality as a guy loves another guy, but instead with gay guys do it in the butt. And that's a weird way to learn about attraction. And I honestly think it's a big part of the inherent squeamishness that so many people have. They think gays in kids media and they think, oh my God, I'm gonna have to explain butt stuff to my kid. I think that's the underlying buried stuff that's doing some of the driving when it comes to this knee-jerk squeamishness. Even though, no, of course you don't have to explain that to your kid any more than you had to explain straight sex to your four-year-old because they saw Ariel kiss Prince Eric. Even if a kid is confused, the answer is simple. Yes, boys can love boys, girls can love girls. Hey. Some even love both boys and girls. That's it. That's the extent of what you actually need to bring kids up to speed on. You don't need to diagram the mechanics out for them. And let, let's get real here for a second. If your child has access to the internet, they already know the mechanics. So whatever you think you're shielding them from, Sorry, uh, you've already lost. And I think it's about the fact that in general, as a society, we're able to think about heterosexual relationships without our brains leaping in all the way to extrapolating to actual sex. Whereas we seem to be unable to think about homosexual relationships without just flat out thinking about that kind of sex as well. And nobody wants to talk to their kids about sex. I don't care how cool a parent you are, nobody is actually looking forward to that conversation. And our inability to think about gay people without also thinking about gay sex might just be the hang up that this all comes back to. And again, I, I get it. I really do. I, I, I understand the desire to protect your kids and keeping an eye out for everything that could possibly go wrong. But when it comes to things like reaction to LGBTQ plus people, that I think much more than a lot of other stuff is, that's a, that's a really a learned behavior. The less, weirdness you inject into it, the less they're going to have. Then if we're lucky, there'll be even less weirdness with their kids and we can get this thing gone. I'd like to see it more or less fade in my lifetime, but I, I mean, let's be realistic. So 
I do get it. I do get the squeamishness. But think about what it is that actually makes you uncomfortable about the idea of gay people in kids' media. Because I, I think for at least some people, it's because they're not recognizing that part of their brain isn't really thinking gay people in children's media is thinking gay sex in children's media. Which of course isn't the reality, but the thing is, even heterosexual, good old fashioned straight sex took a while in terms of media representation. If you're not familiar with the Hayes Code in Hollywood, you couldn't even show a married couple in the same bed. And I, I like forget a sex scene, but just like getting into bed to go to sleep. One of my favorite movie series is the Thin Man series, and and the characters who are who have amazing romantic chemistry and are so obviously in love with each other and they're adorable and they get in these separate twin beds. It's ridiculous. But there was a fear that even that tiny acknowledgement that they share a bed. Oh well, if they share a bed, what are they able to do together in that bed? Oh my God, protect the citizens, protect the children from that horrible depiction of two people laying in a bed together under a blanket in full pajamas. That did not cause a, any sort of breakdown of the moral fiber when we got over that and stopped doing that. And it's not gonna cause a massive breakdown in the moral fiber societally or of your kid individually if you show two boys holding hands or a couple of girls or a girl kissing another girl on the cheek. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about children's media, so I'm talking about relatively innocent stuff here. Have, just have somebody crush on the same gender. It's okay. Like, really, it is. So, I think I'll wrap up there. I hope I made my point okay. I had a, I had a lot to kind of wrap into that, but um, wrap it up there. Think of the children. What are your thoughts on it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You can like and subscribe. I've got a Patreon. Check it out. Uh, and there's buttons and links and stuff. Check it out down below if you feel like it. But you know what? If you don't, hey, I can't tell you what to do because you are the council. I just run the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.